This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. From its debut, Motion has been the premier tool for text, lower thirds, credits, and more. When we create text in Motion, we have five different types of layouts. Type, paragraph, scroll, crawl, and path. In this lesson, we'll focus on the first two, type and paragraph. To begin, select the text tool and click on your canvas. By default, our layout is type. In this layout, Motion will let me type right off the canvas. Press Escape to stop typing, and press the Delete key to delete this layer. Our other option when creating text is to create a paragraph layout. Again, select the Text tool. Instead of clicking, however, click and drag to create a text box. This time, Motion will wrap my text. In paragraph mode, we can also use tab stops. By clicking in the ruler, we can create tab stops. With paragraph mode, we can keep typing and motion will scroll our text. You can scroll through your text using the bar on the side. If you have a scroll wheel, however, it will move your canvas, not the text. When you're done typing, press the escape key to exit from the text tool back to the transform tool. For now, press delete. In the file browser, navigate to your working files, lesson 10. Open the layers pane we'll take a look at importing different types of text. We can import plain text by dragging it into the layers pane. The great thing about motion is when you import text, it automatically aligns it to our safe zones. Press the apostrophe key on your keyboard to show your safe zones. As you can see, motion has wrapped our text to stay within safe zones. It does, however, allow us to go vertically as we may want to scroll the text later. When text is imported using plain text, it uses the standard Helvetica font at 14 points. Delete this and import rich text. Do the same thing by dragging it in, and we see the difference. It no longer uses our safe zones. I'll turn those off by pressing apostrophe. However, it uses the margins that were set in our text editor. Our text has remained bolded and using the font and font size that we set in our text editor. If you double click to edit the text, we can also see it kept our text stops from our text editor. We can, however, modify this inside of Motion. We can click and drag to remove text stops, or click to add new ones. Keep in mind my text was underlined inside my text editor. Motion does not support underlining in text. With our text selected, bring up the heads-up display. From here you can see the most used options for your text. You can use a preset. Presets will be discussed in depth in a later chapter. You can choose your font with a font preview. If the font allows, you can choose bolding, light, oblique, and combinations of both. We can center our text, right align or justify. We can change its vertical alignment and the color of the text. Normally, we can change the overall size of the text. However, in paragraph mode, we cannot make that change. If I add plain text, I can now change the size. I'll delete that and return to my paragraph text. I can change the tracking, which is also known as kerning, and the line spacing, also known as letting. Close the heads-up display and move into the library. From here, you can choose fonts. Motion uses the fonts and the font collections built into OS X. If you're in icon view, you can see a brief preview of the fonts. If you find one you like, click apply to apply it to your text. You can create additional collections using Fontbook. I'm using OS X 10.7 Lion, so I'll launch Fontbook using Launchpad. If you're using an earlier version of OS X, you can find Fontbook in the Applications folder. From here, you can create collections using the plus button in the lower left hand corner and add fonts to your collection by dragging and dropping. You can add as many fonts as you like. 
close font book, you may notice Motion has not updated. You must quit and reopen Motion for the font collections to take effect. And now I can see my favorite fonts inside of Motion. The advantage to creating collections inside a font book is that these collections will be seen everywhere in OS X. For instance, if I open up TextEdit and I show my fonts, I can see my collection off to the left. For now, let's create a standard type layout by clicking on the Motion Canvas with the text tool and type out a word. You can press return to move to a next line and press the escape key when you're done typing. For now, I'll hide the layers pane by pressing F5 and move into the inspector. Text has three options in the inspector, format, style, and layout. For now, we're gonna look at the format tab. Format is essentially an extension of the dashboard where we had presets, fonts, layouts, and so forth. We have those options here in the text inspector. We can change the preset. Again, presets will be covered in depth in a later chapter. We have our basic formatting with our collections, including the one we created in Fontbook. We can change the size and points. Notice how many parameters can be keyframed in the text inspector. For alignment, we can choose center alignment, right alignment, and choose how the last line is justified. However, the justification does not work in the type tool. If we create paragraph, I can change that last line justification. Again, I can change the line spacing and tracking, also known as letting and kerning. We do have the option for kerning in paragraph text. Tracking is the same thing, but for the type layout. And then we have advanced formatting. Advanced formatting contains a lot of the options that are found in the Properties tab. However, these contain additional options for type. For instance, we can scale our text, but if we open up the Disclosure Triangle, we can turn off Effects Layout. This will cause our text to scale, but not affect the layout of the text. Keep this in mind when scaling text, you can get some pretty neat effects. For now, I'll click the reset arrow to reset my scale. We also have offset options to offset them from the anchor point, and the rotation option. This will allow us to rotate each individual letter in both the x, y, and z axis. Let's take a look at this animate option down here. In order for this to work, we must set keyframes. Click the Add Keyframe button across from Rotation to create a keyframe for all parameters of rotation. And make sure that the first keyframe is set to zero. Move about a second down the timeline and add another keyframe. In the X value, make this 333. Press Tab and add 333 for every option. Play this back from the beginning. and notice the animation. There may be time when you want to rotate text and it gives you this twisted motion. However, if you switch this to use orientation, motion will interpolate the position at the beginning and what would be the position of the last keyframe and just animates using those two parameters. Use orientation does not work if you rotate over 360 degrees. For now, I'll click the reset arrow. Let's take a look at slant. Slant is essentially the same as using the shear in the properties. However, with shear, our bounding box is also sheared. In text, slant only slants the glyphs, 
not the bounding box. You may also want your text monospaced. When we get into glyph editing, we can change spacing however we like. There's an option for all caps and the cap size, and an option to make the text editable in Final Cut Pro. 99% of the time, you will want this turned on, especially when using Final Cut Pro. At the bottom is an area where you can add text. The great thing about using this area to add text as opposed to the canvas is it will use OS X's auto correction and spell checker. I can also control click and use the built in spell checker or tell it to change back to my improper spelling. You can also use the built in dictionary built into OS X. You can do this in any version of OS X that had a built in dictionary, 10 4 and up, by holding control and command and the letter D on the keyboard. Move your mouse over a word, and the definition pops up. However, in Lion 10.7, this has changed. You must stop holding the keys on the keyboard in order for this to take effect. In 10.4 through 10.6, you can constantly move your mouse over text, and it will pop up the definition. If you're using a magic trackpad, you can three-finger tap on a word to get the same effect.